Of all the advancements made in science, perhaps the most interesting and most controversial idea is whether or not it's possible to travel through time. One scientist, though, has created a blueprint for a real working time machine. My work is based on the work of Albert Einstein, and that is what gives it its solid scientific basis. His name is Dr. Ronald Millet. It's really a very personal connection, and it had to do with my father. In fact, it motivated all that I did. He was a terrific person. He was a, a television repairman. One of the things that we didn't know was just how ill he really was, and that he had a very weak heart, and he died suddenly of a heart attack when he was only 33, and I was 10 years old. I, I felt like I was in a black hole. I mean, it just uh, completely uh, devastated me. And about a year after he died, when I was 11, I came across H.G. Wells' book, The Time Machine, and that's what turned things around for me. That gave me hope that I could go back into the past and see him again and maybe save his life. So that is what set me on the course of wanting to build a time machine. I was a bookaholic, <laughs> uh, a serious bookaholic. My entire world became a world of wanting to just simply escape into books. And I read science fiction uh, almost to the exclusion of everything else. I would spend all of my lunch money on books. So what happened is, is that eventually I was uh, starving <laughs> and I developed secondary anemia as a result of that habit. So uh, once my mother found that out from the phys our physician, uh, she only gave me bag lunches <laughs> to go to school and, uh, and I got a job. About a year after that I came across a popular book about this genius Einstein in which Einstein said that time was not something that was fixed. Time could be changed and there were different ways of changing it. So I knew that if I could understand Einstein and how time could be changed, then that was the real basis for it. So Einstein became my other obsession, was to understand his work as well as time travel. So I knew I was going to have a long road. And so the way in which I would do that would become a physicist. Today, Dr. Millet enjoys his job as a physics professor at the University of Connecticut. Now, what's important to realize is that Einstein's theory, space and time are linked. And whatever you do to space also happens to time. If you think of this water in this cup as being like empty space, then my work is based on the notion of manipulating that empty space and manipulating time. What I found is, is that by using lasers and creating a circulating beam of laser light, that is to say, getting lasers to light to go into a loop, that what this can do is to stir empty space. And in stirring that empty space, it will eventually stir time. So if we think of the uh, water in this cup as being like empty space, and we think of a spoon as being like the circulating light beam, then if I take the spoon and stir the water, that what will happen is, is that the water swirls around. This is what the circulating light beam is doing to empty space. It's causing the empty space to swirl around. And if I take a piece of paper and I drop it into this, the piece of paper will get swirled around because the water is dragging the paper around. And if we take a subatomic particle that's called a neutron and put it in an empty space, then as the circulating light beam is going around, it will cause the space to swirl around, and that space will drag the neutron around. And there was a very famous mathematician, Kirk Gerber, who's actually known for various important proof in mathematics. And he used Einstein's work, Einstein's theory of gravity, and he speculated that if the entire universe was rotating, that this rotating universe could lead to these loops in time which would allow you to travel into the past. And he even mentions that this is like the time travel in H.G. Wells' book. When I read that, then I knew that I was on the right track, that in fact Einstein's work was going to be the key. So, if we think of time as being a straight line, going from the past to the present to the future, and you think of the bottom of that line as being the past, and the middle of that line as being the present, and the top of that line as being the future, and I represent time the way it's represented in relativity. Now, even though we're unconscious of it, 
all of us are moving along a timeline. We're going from the past to the present to the future. But now, if space is being twisted, you can see what's going to happen, since in Einstein's theory, space and time are linked. As space becomes twisted, time will get twisted into a loop. And now, you can begin to see what's going to happen. If I start out on this loop from the past, from yesterday, as I move along this loop to today, the present, and I continue along this loop, to tomorrow, the future, but look what's happened. I've made a loop out of time. I can move from the future back to the past. So by twisting space, I can twist time into a loop, and along that loop in time, I can move back into the past, and that is the basis of my work. The stage that we're at right now in my research is turning my theories into hardware. Okay. What people don't realize is that it's not like the movies. It doesn't work that way in real science. In other words, what we need to just initiate the first phase of our project will cost a quarter of a million dollars. So the stage that we're at right now is the fundraising stage of that. It's safe to say this research is truly groundbreaking. In a theorem, remarkable. As for Dr. Maleb, Spike Lee will be shooting a feature-length film about his life in the coming months. Wishing you all the best in your journey through time.